Hello, this is Dr. Ben Finio, and in this video, I will be going over the basics of using Zoom for parents of small children. So this is something where the child is the primary participant in the meeting, but odds are you are hovering over there helping them manage the computer. So whether it is Zoom kindergarten or a Zoom birthday party or Zoom piano lessons, I'll show you the basics of what you need to do to join and manage your child's presence in the meeting. I do have a lot of other tutorials about some of the more advanced features and teaching with Zoom. We're not going to go over that in this video. You can find a link to that playlist in the description. For starters, somebody is going to send you a link to a Zoom meeting. They might include a separate password that you'll have to enter manually, or the password might be embedded in the link itself. In this case, the password is embedded, so all I have to do is click this link, and it will open my web browser and prompt me to open Zoom meetings. When you click the Open Zoom Meetings button, it will take a second to open your Zoom application and then give you a preview of your webcam. So this is a good chance to adjust your camera view because as you can see here, my camera is not centered on my face. This lets you get the view set up before you join the meeting and other people can see you. You can then choose the Join with Video button or if you don't want to be seen, Join without video. Now, depending on the host security settings, there are three different things that could happen. You could get admitted to the meeting directly you might see a message that says, please wait for the host to start this meeting, or you might see one that says, please wait, the meeting host will let you in soon. This isn't anything you need to worry about. These are just settings that give the host more control over who joins the meeting and when to prevent unwanted people from joining the meeting. Now, it's generally a good idea to join a meeting a few minutes early to make sure your sound is working, so even if you don't get admitted to the meeting right away, you can click this test computer audio button down at the bottom. That will give you the option to test both your speakers and your microphone. To test your speakers, click the test speaker button and you should hear your speakers play a sound. To test your microphone, click the test mic button and then speak into your microphone. Zoom will then play the recorded sound back at you. Testing, testing. If one of these things doesn't work, double check the drop down menu. This is especially important on computers with external microphones and cameras to make sure you have the proper one selected. Once you're sure that both your speakers and microphone are working, you can close this window and wait to be admitted to the meeting. Once you're admitted to the meeting, you should see a Zoom window with thumbnails of the other participants, but you're not fully connected yet. You'll see how it says connecting to audio over my thumbnail here. You need to click the Join with Computer Audio button to fully join the meeting with your audio enabled. Once you do that, you'll probably want to maximize this Zoom window so you can see everyone better, and then you're finally ready to start your meeting. So, the first thing you'll always want to do once you join a meeting is move your mouse down to the bottom left and check that you are muted, so there should be a red slash through this little microphone icon. It is generally good Zoom etiquette to mute yourself whenever you are not talking, so this prevents everybody else from hearing background noise, like dogs barking, babies crying, or in general, 30 small children all talking over each other when the teacher is trying to talk. So you can click that button to unmute yourself when you do need to talk, but again, whenever you are not talking, you want to make sure you remain muted. Next, you can turn your video off, so of course it can be great to have this on so everybody can see your face, but if you have privacy concerns or you don't want your child being recorded or you don't want people seeing into your home, you can click the stop video button here and that will just display your name. You can also upload a thumbnail so people will at least see your picture. I'm not going to show you how to do that in this video, but if you need to temporarily turn your video off and then turn it back on, you can toggle that using this button. Now, one sort of hybrid option that people can have a lot of fun with, if you do want people to be able to see your child's face, but not necessarily your messy kitchen or the chaos going on in your house behind them, you can choose a virtual background. So click on the little up arrow next to the stop video button here, select choose virtual background, and then you can either upload your own image by clicking on the little plus button for add image or video, or you can select one of Zoom's pre-existing images. And when you do that, Zoom will do its best to make that the background behind your head. So this might not run at all on some older computers, and it doesn't always work perfectly, especially if you're moving your head around or your hands or it might have trouble detecting the exact borders of your hair and your ear and that sort of thing. But in general, it will do a pretty good job hiding what's behind you. So again, this is a good option if you do want people to be able to see your child's face, but not the chaos in the rest of your house. 
Next, let's go over the two main view options that you will use in Zoom, gallery view and speaker view. Now, there are a lot more options depending on whether the teacher is sharing a PowerPoint or if you have two monitors or some other things. I'm not gonna go over those in this video. I do have other tutorials covering those that you can find linked in the description. Here, we're just gonna go over the basics. So what you see here is gallery view. This is when everyone is displayed in an equal size thumbnail. So this could be good for something like a birthday party where the student wants to see all of their friends all the same size. You can switch to speaker view by clicking this button in the upper right, and this will show one person larger than everyone else. So this is better for something like an online class where you want to see the instructor large, and then you can still see your friends or other students in these smaller thumbnails across the top. You can control who appears in this larger view by right-clicking someone and selecting pin video. So if, for example, you're seeing one of the other students instead of the teacher in this large view, find the teacher, right-click them, and select pin video to fix that. Two more quick things we'll go over here, and the cat has decided to make a habit of interrupting my YouTube videos, so he's joined us again. First, there is a text chat feature available in Zoom, so if you move your mouse down to the bottom and click this cat chat button, a text chat window will pop up. So this is frequently used for troubleshooting. If you are having trouble getting your audio set up and you can't hear other people or they can't hear you, you can ask about it here. And teachers will also frequently use this for questions. So rather than having tons of people trying to unmute and talk over each other, you can enter your question in here and then the teacher will address the questions as they see them come up in the chat. Lastly, especially if you are in a larger class, the teacher might ask you to use the raise hand feature in Zoom. So as opposed to physically raising your hand on camera, if you go down to the bottom and click the participants button, this will bring up a list of the people who are in the meeting and you will see a suite of buttons here that Zoom calls nonverbal feedback. So you can click these icons, for example, the raise hand button, that will put a little hand icon next to your name that the teacher will see in the participants list. So rather than looking out at the sea of thumbnails to see who has their hand raised in front of their camera, the teacher can just look at this list and see who has their hand raised with a question. They might also ask simple yes, no questions and ask you to click the yes and no button, etc. And again, that can just make it a little easier for the teacher to manage basic questions rather than having people unmute and try to talk over each other. So remember to access that. If this window disappears somehow or if the chat window disappears, you can always open them again by clicking these two buttons at the bottom. So I hope you found that helpful, especially if you are stuck trying to work at home while juggling managing Zoom meetings for your kids. Again, there are a lot more advanced features in Zoom. I have a bunch of other tutorials. There's a playlist for those linked in the description. And if you have a question or a suggestion for another tutorial, you can always leave a comment below this video and I will do my best to get back to you. Thank you.